What's up heroes, it's your boy Winston here and in today's video we asked some industry professionals and some artists in our community what their favorite texture painting technique is and if they could show it to us. So let's check it out. Hi, I'm Linus Herding, a stylized character artist and the creator of this model of Ysera. Today I want to show you a technique I use in Substance Painter. When working with stylized art, Substance's noises can feel way too detailed, so I use this simple method to convert any noise or generator into a stylized simplification, like this subtle dirt here. For this example, we're going to start with a black mask and a dirt generator. After the dirt, I add a blur filter, then an anchor point, and finally a histogram scan filter to clamp the values of the blurred noise. Then I decrease the layer opacity a bit. Next, I duplicate the layer and remove everything but the histogram scan. I then add a fill layer using the anchor point from before. Finally, I move the histogram scan to the top and dial it back a bit. Now I have this clean, simplified noise that I can tweak just by going back and messing with the parameters in the original dirt generator or blur. And I can even add more effects before the anchor point. Anything I do here will propagate to the other layer. I hope you find this trick helpful. Hello everyone, I'm Pete, and I will be doing a quick Substance Painter clip. I will be showing how to use anchor points. But what are anchor points? Imagine these guys as reusable masks. To create the scales, I use a previously hand paint texture as a mask on a fill layer. To add an anchor point, right click on the mask and select Add Anchor Points. To create the scales, make a new fill layer with the black mask. Inside the mask, add another fill layer. In the fill layer properties, click the gray scale button, go to Anchor Point and select your anchor. This will use the anchor point you created before as a reusable mask. This layer will be your base layer. Add height and color. Add some blur to the mask to smooth the edges and apply a warp filter to break the forms a little. To add details inside the scales, create a fill layer with the head channel and a black mask. Select the anchor point as before, but this time add a paint layer on top. Paint everything black and then add the details with white on top. To limit the details to stay inside the anchor point mask, set the paint layer to multiply mode. Then blur the layer for a smoother appearance. You can also add some color to the details. Create variation by making a new fill layer with your anchor point in the black mask. In a second fill layer inside the mask, add a grunge texture. Set the grunge layer to multiply mode to keep it inside the anchor point mask. For roundness and volume and scales, create another fill layer with only the head channel on. Add a black mask with your anchor point inside, and then apply a blur on top, but place it in multiply mode so the effect stays inside your anchor point. This is an underused tool, but you can achieve a lot of details with it. Thanks for watching and remember to have fun! Texturing tips in Substance Painter First off, when you create a project, it's important to change your HDRI. By default, Substance uses this panorama HDRI, which has a lot of orange and yellow light information. Notice how warm our skin looks right now. It's important to change it to something more neutral. The one I always use is Studio Tomoko, which is here at the bottom. Now, after it's applied, notice that our skin is not as orange and warm anymore. This is because this HDRI has no light or no color in the light. It's just a nice white bright light, which is really good for texturing. Another thing I like to do is to change the environment alignment to camera. That way the light will always be facing where the camera is pointed. This is really helpful for when you want to get into tight spots like behind the ear, as your view will always be illuminated. Tip number two, using HSL on a layer with pass-through. Sometimes when you use scan textures, 
uh, you want to change the color a little bit, but it can be quite often can be quite difficult to do that. You normally have to go into Photoshop and do your adjustments there. Now in substance, uh, there's a really easy workaround for that. You could just add a paint layer, set the base color to pass through. And now you can add a filter with an HSL. And with this, you'll be able to adjust the saturation, the hue, and the lightness of whatever is below this layer. What the pass through does is it samples all of the layers below this current layer. That's how you can get it to affect everything below it. You can isolate this by a mask or putting everything inside a folder uh, because the pass through will respect only what's inside of the folder. This way you could do really nice subtle adjustments to your skin to get it to match the tone that you're after. Tip number three, anchor points. So for this example, I have this mascara texture from ScanStore. Now I really like the shape, but I don't like the color and there's no depth or height to this. How can we change that? This is pretty easy by using anchor points. You could just simply add an anchor point to your layer, then create a new fill layer and in the mask, add a fill into the mask. And then in the grayscale, just go to anchor points and choose the anchor point that we created. It's important to know that this anchor point can sample all of the channels from whatever you sampled. So it's important to make sure that you have the reference channel to the correct channel that you want to sample. In this case, we only care about the base color, but this can also be used to get together the roughness or the height from another layer. Now, if we look at our mask, this is the effect. It's a little weak. So what we can do is we can add a levels after that to crush it a bit so the effect becomes stronger. And if you want a bit more stylization, you can add the blur slope, which will just break up the shape and make it look slightly more natural. Now that we have the anchor point set up in our mask, we have the ability to change the color to whichever we want. We can change all of the other channels like metallic, roughness and height. Now on this model, I also have subsurface scattering enabled and I want the scattering to be removed for this effect. And because we have a layer, we can easily just set the scattering to zero to help to separate the makeup from the skin. Tip number four, scan cleanup. Now, oftentimes it can be pretty useful to use a scan texture as a base for us to get started. But one thing you might notice is that most scan textures tend to leave the hair in there. And we also have very red ears. Now we don't want red ears because we want to have the redness in the ears be relied on the subsurface scattering of our shader. And if you have this much red in your texture, it will double up the effect in the render, which will lead to very red ears. So the way to fix this is to just completely remove all of the red to make it a nice neutral tone. Now the easiest way to do this is to just add a new fill layer and make it a color that's very similar to the rest of our skin. Now in the mask, we wanna start painting out the areas where we want to isolate this new color. I like to use the Dirt One brush with a very low flow because it helps to give a very nice soft transition. Now we can go ahead and paint everywhere where we wanna remove all of those extra details. You can also use it to remove some of the blemishes here, but just be careful because this is a solid color, it might be a bit noticeable. Now, once you've added that, you can see here the transition is still noticeable. So what we can do is we can do some HSL adjustments to bring the skin tone a bit closer. And then also we can start painting in some colors, some reds and some blues for blood flow. And also we can add some veins and that will ha just help to hide the transition a little bit more. Now you can go a lot more in depth and use a lot of different colors when you start blending it in. It's all just down to taste and what you need at the end of the day. Next tip, using clone brush and removing seams. To use the clone brush, we're going to add a empty paint layer. Then it's important that for every channel you want to use, you have to set it to pass through. 
So we're just gonna cycle through all of the channels and set all of them to pass through. Now that we have prepared our channels, we can select the clone stamp brush. Now hold V and click to sample the area. You usually want to sample the area right next to where your seam is. It's important to know before you start painting that all of the channels are turned on inside of the paint layer. That way, when we paint our clone, it will affect all of our channels. And then we can just start to paint. One thing I like to do is to use a very soft brush and set the flow quite low. Also make your brush slightly bigger because this will help you to have a smoother transition when you paint over the seam. Next tip, using the new path tool. Now to use the new path tool, we can just add a paint layer and then select our new path tool. With this, we can add a Bezier curve that will snap to the surface of our model. This is fully procedural, so we can change the settings of this at any time, which is extremely powerful for adding stitches. Now, if you want to add stitches, just go to brushes, tools, and search for the top stitch. Once we have that clicked with our path selected, it will add these stitches. Now, if you want to isolate the effect without seeing the curve, you can click this button up top here. This remains procedural as long as we have our path selected. We can now very easily change the size and the stitch settings here, like stitch width, and also the different types of presets for our stitches. This all remains procedural. So that means we can go about texturing on any other layers and we can come back to our uh, our paint layer and as long as we have our path selected up here we can adjust those settings to our liking this is extremely useful and powerful for creating complex stitch detail hey i hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned something new about texture painting make sure to hit the subscribe button here check out our other videos and make sure that you leave us a like and a comment below if you have any questions or ideas you'd like to see from us i'll see you in the next one